Okay, so that's uh, that's the whole thing. So do you ski? Uh, I used to ski a lot. I used to do ski tours. Uh, I've skied every um, everything west of the Rockies, every ski resort there is. Love it. I mean, a dear friend of mine is Franz Weber. Oh. Uh, who lives in Reno. Was, was, was six time world downhill champion right mm. a long time. Well, when you say ski tour, are you out just doing a ski tour or were you incorporating the skiing into your yes, music I tour? Was. Yeah. It, it, to, to the form, uh, to the latter. Uh, uh, I was down there doing it. I went there, I did ski tours so I could ski. Yeah. <laughs> ah, so you, you gotta be a promoter's darling. I'm wondering if he's gonna <laughs> yeah. be at the show tonight. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I'm, uh, you know, this age, I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be getting up there. <laughs> well, whatever the age, you look good, Dave. So, and, uh, Thank uh, you. Hawaii obviously mm -hmm. must be. You've uh, recently, uh, again, uh, speaking of your website or your Facebook, you posted that you built you built a home studio. So can we see some new recordings coming from you? Is uh, that the plan here? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the problem is, is the internet and radio just about killed all that. Yeah. I don't don't disagree with you. Yeah. It's it's uh, it has. There's no either. It's become an exercise in futility. So I, you know, I fool around the studio and I have new stuff, and basically, I just the only only place you can get it is at the shows or off the website. Um, they made some music out of So that's the only place. There's no and radio is pretty much the disaster. There's nothing on there. There's nobody home. There's no great DJs. There's nobody playing anything. Mm -hmm. Some guy sitting there sticking a card in. I'm going out for half an hour, smoke a cigarette, and come you know, back and put another one in. And even classic rock radio, I mean, you're playing it. You've all got songs at home. What the hell you want to listen for? <laughs> so, and I, and I, you know, I said, well, here's the classic Dave Mason, and here's a brand new song from Dave. It's not there. It's yeah. gone. It's, it's, it's crazy. So all that has disappeared in, um, and for songwriters, specifically for songwriters, if you are a songwriter, it's just, it's terrible. I mean, Pandora and Spotify are basically, you know, screwing all the artists if you want to tell you the truth, because they don't pay the correct royalties. So for a songwriter, it's a disaster. The, um, I never could quite understand uh, why classic rock radio does money. not play careers. It's called money. Yeah, yeah. well that's it. You know, it's, it, it comes down to It's a, called corporate. Corporate yeah. gets hold of it. It's all research it. and they play a couple of hooks from a couple of songs and... Uh, we become wallpaper. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Traffic would have been able to make it today? If Traffic started now in 2019? I don't know. I have no idea. Or Dave Mason, I'm, I'm, I'm in traffic. You can just I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm an analog man living in a digital world. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think Joe Walsh already used yeah. that for an hour. <laughs> I, I don't know if I didn't, I didn't know if you did or not. Uh, recently, uh, milestone anniversary, if you will, Electric Ladyland, and of course, we know that all along the Watchtower. And uh, you, you talk about that in your show. Yeah. Um, Graham Edge, who's uh, the drummer with the Moody Blues, he talked about having a friendship with Hendrix and stuff, and how a lot of you guys did at that time. What was it um, that everybody kind of gravitated to and that Jimmy allowed everybody into his little universe within just a, such a short period of time? How did you first come in contact with him? Well, I um, mean, to start with, in, in um, you know, in the, here in the U.S., you had um, you had New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Nashville, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Detroit. All of them had music scenes, and all of them had, had that music. England, everybody finished up in one place in London. Uh, that's where the studios were. 
so uh, there were a, there were a small number of some uh, sort of private clubs, speakeasy, uh, Bang of Nails, mm -hmm. uh, Scotch St. James, and um, I think I'm contributing to speakeasy. Was sitting by himself in a booth, and I just sat down, and started talking to him. He was a, um, a, a traffic fan also, yeah. and just. And plus, we were all recording in the same studio, right, pretty much. I mean, we were at Olympic. He was the same engineer, Eddie Kramer. Um, so it was not unusual for people to drop by each other's sessions. Um, you know, uh, and so I just became friends. And then I, had, um, after the first traffic album, I actually I, I left. Then uh, I was uh, I was uh, so I mean I just for me I just I left because I couldn't deal with the success of it it was just too much for me you know I just I'm basically a country boy I mean, <laughs> grew up running around cornfields and stuff building bows and arrows uh, so it was just a little bit much for me and that's where I got friendly with him and and, and obviously there's not many able to record with him, so uh, I got to record with him, and did the uh, we were at a friend's a friend of his house one afternoon, a party, a couple of other guys from different bands, the Banco, the Pretty Things, um, and uh, everybody, of course, wanted to hear the new Bob Dylan album, John Wesley Harding, and uh, I guess something caught his ear. In the studio about three days later, a few, I forget exactly how long. Um, and myself and Jimmy and Mitch, there was no no writing because there was a riff going on. And I, frankly, in that period, uh, we were talking about me taking Noel's place on bass. Oh, okay. yeah, actually, Brian Jones was there. And Brian, who we all knew, except Brian wasn't exactly. There. <laughs> <laughs> he was there, but he wasn't there. And, uh, um, and, and so we, we just laid down the track for Washington. Sitting, Jimmy and I were sitting across from each other at the 12 string and mentioned laid the track down for it. And then I also sang our cross town traffic. And then there's a bunch of tracks too that, that um, I did with him playing bass in sitar. Um, but I have no idea what happened. Oh, really? Well, so that could be discovered so, I, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> well, I'm always amazed that the guy was only around for X amount of years, but Very they short continue time. to dig stuff up like he had a 50-year career or something. I, I could never quite understand. Well, so I think there's a lot of ideas and work stuff that he was kind of doing that he, that he did. Yeah. Kramer always said he was a studio hound. He just loved it. And, you know, yeah, well, he was but so innovative. Yeah, what was it about him? I mean, you know, I, I know that's a stupid question, but for, for you guys, for you, for the fellow musicians, you know, his peers, what was it about him that just attracted you to him? And, you know, that A, you wanted to be friends, and B, some of you were lucky enough to record and play with him. Same things you like, boy. It was unique. Yeah. You know, I mean, Eric's a great, you know, Clapton and is a great guitar player, but it's sort of, you know, he's, he just perfected, perfected pretty much everybody's blues licks, you know. And Jimmy just took it further, you know, because um, he was that, he, you know, part of that thing. So he was just, like I say, there's a lot of great guitar players, a lot of them. Uh, Joe Bonamassa has been in the world. Um, and then there's a the number of them, but there is no more Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. you know, it was just so innovative. Have you ever? It was the, uh, was the thing. Have you, did anyone ever come close, though, in your eyes? You mentioned a couple of great players, but. Not like, the, not like him. I mean, guitar wise, I guess, uh, you know, that I would put up there with his, his back, Jeff Beck. Mm -hmm. Jeff's very, very innovative in a lot of ways. But Hendrix was just, you know, <laughs> he had the whole thing going on. Yeah. 
the list of people you worked with is quite incredible, probably even longer than my arm and your arms. Anybody that you would that's on the wish list, you mentioned, you know, Cropper, you just mentioned. Ah, uh, uh, Bonnie Ray. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's about right off the top of my head that I can think of. Um, uh, Susan Tedeschi is incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, Tedeschi trucks thing is awesome. Yeah, they are. They do quite well for themselves. Oh, no, yeah, well, they should. They're great. They're fantastic. Uh, that almond family just sort of. Yeah, keeps breeding and breeding and breeding. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's great. Mm -hmm. yeah.